everybody i hope y'all had a good week and if not just know it's the weekend recharge and do better um yeah be sure to like and subscribe um you know check out the other videos with ladies first but right now let's talk about the review for love during lockup you're the inmate uh season four episode 45 <laughs> <laughs> I when I say I'm trying and I really do mean I'm trying but these people are leaving me with like no choice but to be harsh like I just can't this if we pretend like this is normal it's going to become more widespread and I can't take it I just can't I just can't so Andy and Brittany speaking of dumbasses so he's not going to see Brittany because Brittany told him not to come okay most logical decision you've made this far so he's driving in the rain, talking to the camera crew. That's not dangerous at all. Okay. Um, so he said, Brittany is basing how she feels about me right now on what one of my kids said. And my kids are misremembering things. So to a degree, I get it. To a degree, I get it. However, children don't simply misremember. Adults can misremember too. And whatever you thought was enough, may not have been enough and then to say well they turned out all right give me some credit let me tell you something people can turn out all right in spite of circumstances and the words of dr maya angelou people may not remember exactly what you did but they will remember the way you made them feel and we talk about two young ladies that feel that way okay so anyway so Brittany said grace and grayson is Brittany's daughter had to cancel her visit um has to cancel a visit if he doesn't come because they were on the list together and i was like that's stupid but whatever and then he makes this ridiculous statement and says oh so that's my only purpose now to make sure she can visit you motherfucking right bitch and now i know your daughters aren't lying because you made this shit about you so quick it was disgusting okay it's not because you love Brittany that you want this to work out. You should have said, I love Brittany and therefore I love Grayson. And I don't want to see her disappointed either. But see, that's very telling about you. All right. So in Brittany's defense, I'll give it to her. Brittany didn't back down. <laughs> mm. Nothing like a good drink on a Friday night. Now. She didn't back down. She got his ass together. She was like, no, you weren't blindsided. I was. I said, go off, Brit. Go off. Did I ever tell y'all I never got along with a Britney in my life? Even if they were my friends, they always like did something fucked up to me. It, it, anyway. So Andy, then they show Andy. And the next day, he's going to go to the prison. But the next time we see Andy, he's at a restaurant coming up with a song for Britney with a guitar. His vocals suck. Garth Brooks will not be calling you anytime soon. And he's working on a song for somebody who I can already tell you has another side, another man. Andy, you are the side dude. You send her money. She is looking for, she's looking for a way out. Okay. And this was convenient. And she's not fucking with you like that. So stop. Have, just stop. Okay. Then we get, okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump to Savannah and Jake so I can get them over with. Because Savannah, <laughs> these people are so goddamn stupid. Savannah. I'm not trying to be mean, and I know that's not a good way to start a sentence, but this banana face bitch is already just, I just don't want to see her anymore. I don't want to see her anymore. I don't, I, I'm not here for the fuck shit. So was it me? We get her going into the lawyer. Was it me or did it seem like she wanted to fuck the lawyer and the lawyer wanted to fuck her? Is it, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So anyway, she starts telling the story about her boyfriend, Jake, and how he got into jail. Okay, okay. We TV, y'all could have edited that, that shit out for us. All right, so she also asked, well, is this ending seem normal for this kind of thing? And he said, well, it wasn't abnormal. So the lawyer seemed to honestly be a good lawyer. He wasn't like that son of a bitch we saw last week that act like he was mad that black woman walked in his office and was like, well, if he's a con. I'm like, have you looked at this shit? Anyway, he did his research ahead of time, and he talks about well, you know, in those transcripts, he was making death threats and he had to be shackled during court. And we're talking about court, not prison, court. All right, this is a white guy, okay? So everything about his background indicates to me, indicates, I'm not saying people can't grow, but indicates heavy antisocial behavior and a tendency towards violence. And men, I'm sorry, are not good creatures for that. 
if that's his upbringing, I'm just going to tell you right now, baby, let this go. It's not safe. So the board approved his commutation or whatever, but the governor of Iowa turned it down. Now, this guy is white, and I keep mentioning this because when somebody's black, we, we, we already know what it is. We already know what it is if a whole board had voted unanimously for him to have his sentence commuted, and then the governor struck it down. We'd be like, oh, no, we already know what this is. But this guy is white, and, and to the lawyer's point, he was like, well, there's maybe something you don't know. He said, it could be something I'm missing, and I know, because my uncle was a lawyer, before he passed, that there are things that judges, that governors can see that may be sometimes sealed to even, like, a lawyer who's been hired, but they can have access to information, certain kinds of information. And so, and because this guy is white, it's just hard for me to believe there ain't some other shit to this. So he told her she needs to contact the family and see if there are other issues that the family can highlight and help her with. I was like, baby, she ain't already been down that yellow brick road, okay? And she told the lawyer that she thinks getting married, she asked him, you know, and that's, the desperation is killing me. She asked the lawyer, do you think getting married would help? It'd be a better example. It would design, you know, it would give them an impression that he has structure in his life, that he has a family, so on and so forth. And I was like, okay, first of all, bitch, why are you trying to marry a man with nothing to fucking offer you? Nothing, like nothing. Like, what the fuck? Did I miss him? Did they know each other in middle or high school? What the hell? So you are taking care of him in jail and will have to take care of him when he gets out. Okay, because it don't seem like his family is doing much for him. Like, I, like Savannah, go get artificially inseminated. Go just have a baby with a random. I don't care. Get a foster kid, a puppy, a goldfish. I don't give a fuck what you do. Anything but this foolishness. Okay, because you looking stupid. And Jake doesn't have you looking stupid. You have you looking stupid. All right? Get off my screen and get off the show. All right. So then we get her in the car going back, and she, Jake calls or whatever. So she is saying um, to Jake, well, she's saying in the car first that it shouldn't be that hard to get married. All she has to do is talk to the warden and make sure they're getting married for the right reason. And she was like, him getting out of prison is the right reason, right? You know, she's talking to the camera crew too. So he calls and asks her how the lawyer visit went. And she says, well, he gave legal advice that we should get married. And he's like, wait, no, no, no. I really want like the nuts and bolts, like the actual legal details. She was like, no, that's, I don't understand why you don't believe it. First of all, I do. He didn't believe her, and honestly, I don't blame him for not trusting her. She has apparently been driving this marriage thing home. She's the kind that wants to get married, to be able to say she is married, and nothing else. She's the kind, she'll be cheating on her husband or whatever, and she just likes the fact to be able to say that she's married. Don't worry, Savannah, there is some other raggedy-ass bum motherfucker walking around Iowa that will marry you, bitch. Go find that ugly motherfucker and y'all get married. Like, why are you ch fucking with a prick? Girl, stop. Um. So anyway, she told him about the lawyer saying she should talk to his family. And she said, I'm going by Waterloo. Um, should I stop by? And he was like, no. Like, I'm, she was like, well, why not? And he was like, that's intrusive. Like, you can't just show up at somebody's house. Bitch, are you crazy? Anyway, so he offered, he said his friend Tim... He said he's known him since he was a kid. He was like, he'll help you. Like, I mean, he's actually trying to give her an idea. Like, honestly, Jake sounds like he's trying, but I don't know if he sounds like he's trying because Savannah is so retarded and slow and crazy. Um, I don't know when that's supposed to call people retarded no more, but Savannah's leaving me no choice. And we know she's not really retarded, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> who refuses to tell you about, any man who refuses to tell you about his family is not safe. He's definitely hiding something. Savannah, I done told you now. Now, that's it. All right, so let's get to Letitia. I don't know if it's Letitia or Letitia, whatever. So she's going to visit him in prison. So they are strict with visitors. She's telling us they say what they can and can't wear, like nothing too short. She was like, they want us to dress like nuns. And I didn't know people had them kind of rules in terms of like the visitors. Like, you know, I just didn't know. So she tells Keith about the lawyer, what the lawyer said in regards to them working together with the business, which is basically a no. Okay, he says he doesn't care what the attorney says. He cares about her and his family. Then he says, 
He doesn't have to do anything like sign the postnuptial agreement. She was like, well, you're taking it the wrong way. I did not want you to take it like that. I'm just telling you what he said. And he was like, I don't listen to no attorney. And I was like, now granted, I wasn't fucking with that white man that was the attorney. But let me just say that. Let me just <laughs> parenthetically include him not listening to an attorney, Letitia, might be why his black ass is locked up now. Okay? I'm just saying. You in prison and you still don't get it? Bruh. So I would be offended, sure. I think anybody would be offended by the idea of a post-nuptial agreement, even a pre-nuptial agreement. I think average people would feel that way. I would feel that way. What I mean, and I'm a self-sufficient individual. You know, I'm not like rich, but I'm, you know, a single woman who would take care of myself. But the idea of it is it's insulting. I can understand that. Um, however, Letitia, I'm looking at you because you a dummy for marrying his hood ass, okay? He has no business skills. You were trying to include him. You done sent your kids off to be with their daddies and talk about, oh, all this other stuff. Da, da, da. Girl, this does not have to be a problem. This is a problem you are creating. Anyway, so Letitia goes to visit him in this bright pink jacket that was given real Selena's y los dinos. But anyway, she said she wanted to look like the baddest bitch in the city. And I said, <laughs> Letitia, girl, you look like the baddest bitch in the city? Of course you are. You in the desert. I'm sure you the baddest bitch when your only competition is a lizard and a cactus. Girl, bye. Anyway. So she said, well, I bend the rules a little so he can see a nipple. And I'm just like, either it's a rule or it ain't. You going to go all the way to Minnesota, wherever the fuck she was, and then do this? Girl, bye. And please tell me what the fuck. What the fuck make people go after somebody who is in the same fucking prison as El Chapo and the Unabomber? And none of this says to you, alert. Like, Mary Jane put it in the comments last week that she was a former prisoner. <laughs> and I'm still like, but like, if you don't want to go back, sis, like, I just need you to like, because even then there's levels of criminals. Like, being with a man who had to go to the same prison as El Chapo and Unibo, that is not a flex. Like, that shit actually seems dangerous and nothing to brag about. Okay, but that's just me. Renika. <laughs> I did this in order of dummies. <laughs> Renika, 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 and Asante. So her and her sister tried to work it out at the beginning of the episode. And her sister admitted she was drunk, but she was trying to express her feelings. And her sister was like, look, I just hope you're not going down there chasing dick and that you have a good life and then like she hugs her and she says but i have one more thing to say you chasing dick <laughs> renika you seem to I, I know you don't have a perfect family nobody does but you seem to have a good solid family who loves you and for y'all to be in the same city honestly i think it's a blessing and a good thing because i come from a family of seven and, you know, we're all in different parts of the country. Like, now I realize, you know, the benefits of that. But, we, you know, we all had our own goals and that kind of thing. But I'm just saying that that's, that's more of a blessing than you realize. Um, so she says she feels like she's safe and her daughters are going to be safe with him, even though she's never met him in person. CPS, come and investigate this bitch. And Renika, it's not even that I just dislike you or anything, but your teenage daughters don't need to fucking be around this motherfucker. Period. Okay, especially not girls. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about that. Now, one daughter, when she's asking them what they think, was like, well, I think, well, when the crew was asking them what they think, she's like, my mom's intentions are good. Then the other daughter said how she was going to miss her family and friends. And she just looked like she wanted to cry. I felt so bad. Um, so they were sad and, and they are teenagers and they're still young. And Renika, you're setting a terrible example because you're uprooting them and sacrificing their sense of security, safety, um, familiarity with family for some motherfucker you've never met in fucking person. 
That's some bullshit. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm not sorry. Like, are there fathers in their life? Was it that easy for you to take uproot them? Because if their fathers are not in their life, then to me, you're making it even worse, right? Because then that means they're not even used to having a male father figure in their life. And then this, this is the shit you hand them. It's some motherfucker coming out of prison who we know got multiple chicks. All right. So I just, I'm not here for it. So they get to a rental house in Atlanta, right? They get out the car and she was like, get your stuff. Y'all got school tomorrow. I was like, wait a minute. Louisville to Atlanta. And granted, we're not talking about a far, far, far. But that's not the point. They're in a rental house, a house they've never been to, a state they've never lived in, a city they don't know anything about. And you going to make them go to school tomorrow. And I'm not saying that, yeah, okay, they just got there, you know, making sure they're enrolled, that kind of thing. They don't know the city or anything. You know how scary that is? That's fucked up. Okay? And then it's not like a new situation. Because I know I had to move in high school. But, like, my family, my parents, my siblings, like, they they went. <laughs> like, the mother is going to pick up her boyfriend from prison. And these kids are from Kentucky, not Georgia. Okay? Like, that's some scary shit. All right? She said, well... I know that they'll adjust quickly and they'll be happier because the schools in Atlanta are way better than the schools in Kentucky. And she said it like that. Honey, a quote unquote better school academically, whatever that looks like to you, won't stop them from being sad and from missing their hometown. You have uprooted them and what appears to be in the midst of a school year at that. Renika, you would have been better off being that chick that leaves the kids with the grandma. Honestly, you would have at least, at least they would have had a sense of security. Because you, not only are you going to pick him up in prison, you leaving him with your homegirl, Ray. They could, hell, they could have stayed with your sister back in Kentucky. You know she was going to look out for her nieces. Like, I'm not saying that your, your friend ain't your friend, but I'm just saying you don't leave your kids with just anybody. And I'm not saying she is, but everybody meant to be around your fucking kids. So Ray is like, do you really feel like he's only messing with you after all these years? Do you really believe you're the only chick in his life? Everybody has told her the same fucking thing. Everybody. Everybody. Okay? Her friend already had this experience and admits that she had it and they'll tell you anything. Your friend is a friend because she's willing to be that vulnerable with you. Because that would be some embarrassing shit I would never want to admit. But she's also trying to help you. She was like, I've been wanting you to move to Atlanta for years, but not for that. <laughs> anyway, so then the girls tell her they are staying. Well, she tells the girls they're staying with Ray while she goes to pick up Asante. And I'm just like, damn, bitch. Like, just cut it out. And the, the girls said they don't want him to move in because they don't know him. You have a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old. That's enough. They've never even seen this man in person. Fuck just not liking somebody you dating. They don't fucking know him. Like, and she was like, well, he's very loving. I know that she can't describe nothing specific. Why? Because she ain't been with him specifically, okay? She hasn't, girl, bye. So her friend looks Asante up on Instagram. And he has a bunch of different girls on his Instagram. And I was thinking to myself, Renika, Renika, you didn't think to look up his Instagram before you moved from Atlanta. I mean, from Louisville to Atlanta to see other girls. I, mean, I would just think a man you can't touch, you might just at least be obsessed with his social media page to notice. See that? Maybe Renika ain't, you know, when I think about it, maybe Renika ain't as stupid as she's acting. Maybe this is just about her trying to boost her rap career and she's hoping she can get on somebody's reality show outside of this. That's, that's, that has to be it. That has to be. I need that so I can go to bed tonight. Anyway, so Jade and Chris. Jade. Run. Just run for the hills. Okay, so Jessica goes with Jade to visit Chris and his family. So before, like, you know, they get to the space or whatever, Jessica was like, she thinks they should hash it out. She's talking to Chris on the phone. Look, I think we should hash it out when we see each other. Like, she wasn't trying to make a big thing out of it. Then he said to her, well, actions speak louder than words. And says he hopes she keeps her attitude in check. 
I said, excuse me, sir? You have a whole fucking prison warden telling you what to do. How dare you? So Chris got transferred, okay, to a medium security prison, which is more strict than the previous prison he's been in within their five years of marriage. Jay, what the fuck? Anybody fucking up in prison like that to get not simply to another prison, but another kind of prison and you go up instead of down? I, what what do we have to do to smack? I mean, like, does somebody just need to really, I mean, just whoop Jay's ass before Chris does? So I'm going to tell you right now, that's the kind of man he is. Anyway, all right. And that made me think he won't be getting out as soon as he's telling her he will or his family, what he's been telling his family. So the mother doesn't want to see Jade or catch up with her, according to Chris, or to the family. As far as I'm concerned, this is what I was thinking before I, you know, saw the rest of the family. Um, Chris is a liar. No telling what kind of shit he started, what kind of triangulation he's playing. She said the mother was snobby. Um, Jade was like, I gave her a Christmas present and she gave it back and it hurt my feelings. And I was thinking to myself, that would hurt anybody. You give somebody a gift and they give it back, that's an insult. That's an insult, and it's actually a really cruel thing to do. Because even when people gave us gifts as kids, regardless of whether we liked it or not, my mother always said, you always say thank you. You don't ever say you don't like something like that, even if you disregard it later. Like, and then to do that as an adult, like, you know, you have to tell kids that because they need to learn how to act. But she's doing that as an adult. I mean, honestly, I think Jay's stupid, but I feel bad hearing that. So... Let me tell you, Chris has the kind of mother who fucked him up, failed him, and now wants to take it out on the one woman in his life that takes up the space that she was supposed to fill. Okay, see, she could just be his wife if you had been his mother, but now she has to be his mother and his wife. So Chris's family is judgmental of Jade. And to Jade's point, she said, well, you're in prison, not me. So my family should be judging you. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, they should be, okay? Now, Jade and Jessica later show up at the prison, but they're having like a cookout picnic, whatever it is. And I was like, a medium security prison is letting him cook out, but I guess because he's um, indigenous um, and that's something that they are allowed to do based on like religion or affiliation, whatever the case may be. Um, I still was like, what the fuck? But whatever. So Jade told the cousin... Or the niece, I don't know, cousin, niece, whatever, you know, she, you can be both in the family. Anyway, so Jay tells her, the girl is there with the glasses. She was like, oh, I love your earrings. And she was like, oh, thank you. My fiance gave it to me, who's in prison too. And her and Jay like, ah! And I'm like, <laughs> y'all are some bobblehead bitches. Okay, anyway, so they got really excited and that was weird to me. Um, So Jay says to the cousin, niece, whatever the fuck she was, um, she was like, well, you know, his mom doesn't really like me. And like the niece starts nodding her head and just goes, yeah. I was like, y'all some fucked up people. Y'all are not nice. Y'all are not nice. And yes, I think Jade's a dummy, but I do think that Jade really means well by Chris. I think she fucked up by marrying him. Um, and just needs to divorce him. That's it. I mean, how many rights does a prisoner really have? Not that I agree with prisoners not having rights, but I'm just making a point. How many rights do they really have? Send him the divorce papers, girl, and go live your life, okay? He wants to be the provider. How the fuck you gonna be a provider from prison? Fuck you. Anyway, um, the mom's full of sh And so the, the niece, cousin, whatever the fuck she was, was like, well, she's been through a lot. Give her grace. Well, you know what? Jay's been married to a prisoner for five years. Why don't y'all give her some grace? Because as, as stupid as I think Jade is, it's the same thing. Like, I still think Jade is a nice person. Just like I think Renika is a nice person, but she fucking up. Okay? So, um, then she was like, well, I never thought about me being flashy on social media. Um, would be a reason for them not to like me. Maybe I should think about that. And I was like, bitch, that ain't why they don't like you. They the kind, they don't like nobody that come through there. They all fucked up the same way. Okay? They are. Now, Jade is explaining herself to the family. And I'm just sitting up there like, you don't owe these bitches nothing. Nothing. Zero. Okay? Um, the cousin niece, whoever the fuck she was, 
said she needs to work harder. When they have her in the confessional, the, the confessional on under the tree that is a result of a confessional for her putting them in on the show. And was like, well, she needs to work harder to develop a relationship with the family. I said, bitch, are you serious? Could she work any harder? Like, get the fuck out of here. His family's fucked up and toxic. Jay, you seem to at least, even though you disrespected the entire fuck out of your family, your father in particular, and your mother when you lifted up your skirt and showed that tattoo on your ass, other than that, you seem to have a decent family. Girl... Get back. Look, I can't take no more of this. Y'all have a great weekend. I will talk to y'all soon enough. See y'all later. Bye.